in this in the uh title page of my last presentation on snakes and gold butte um so uh gold butte bio blitz we're playing a bio blitz and what is a bio blitz you're probably asking it's um there is a bio blitz in action. This picture was taken back at the Amargosa Valley bio blitz we had last year. Basically, you get a bunch of people, uh, Jim Boone being one of them, <laughs> to go out and check out stuff. And it is um, my one of my favorite sayings, with many hands comes light work. So um, what we do is we basically get a huge collection of people out on the landscape with a one purpose of observing everything they can see or hear, or taste, or whatever way we're detecting it. Um, and that what, what able, that does is that overcomes the detection probability that we face when trying to find occurrences of species. So we have um, these uh, snakes in Gold Butte and lizards in Gold Butte and other things that are really not out on about on the landscape. And um, the only way we can really get detections of them is by overwhelming their uh, low detection probabilities with enough people that we can actually observe this animal and record it. Uh, Gila monster is a perfect example of this, where we have an animal that spends 98% of its life underground or something ridiculous. And it comes out for maybe 20 minutes a year, eats a couple legs, and then Lee goes back to sleep. So um if we're out there on that right time we can actually observe this animal actually get a detection of this animal uh get a cool picture of it too um so are you qualified to do this you sure as heck are uh, but only if you're willing to go out and do it which means going out and taking a look at this stuff so gold butte monument has a surprisingly i mean as you guys know has surprisingly high connectivity to the surrounding landscape gold butte is where the great basin desert which if you look at my cursor up here in the north of it, the Mojave Desert to the west of it, and then the Colorado Plateau to the east of it. And it's kind of bordered by all those, those three deserts. And where they all come together, you can get species and influences from those deserts. For example, uh, one of the, the critters we're going to hopefully be running into, which would be a new detection for Nevada, would be a black-tailed rattlesnake. There's rumors that are out in Gold Butte. We're going to see if the rumors are true. Uh, with the bio blitz where we can potentially overcome these things by driving around looking around and potentially seeing one uh, another critter that we think might exist out there but we're not sure is the um grand canyon subspecies of the great basin rattlesnake we pre i'm pretty convinced that great basins are in the virgin mountains great basin rattlesnakes but i don't have any detections or <laughs> to prove it so that's another thing i want to look for uh, another thing I'm looking for that we haven't seen out there uh, in many years is the Sonoran Mountain King Snake, which is a beautiful snake that is around. I mean, so Gold Butte, again, remains super diverse and could this could yield into species, you know, range extensions, which are really important for our management of the area um, and, and, and just really cool, I think, to know and get those things dialed in. So, um uh, another thing is that these these uh, I want to look for is the uh, for some uh, sorry Mojave fringe toads lizard, which is a sand specialist that has migrated through uh, and around the these river corridors when they were a little more conducive to its species migrating, and now they become isolated in these sandy areas and maybe they're out at the mud wash dunes. So we're gonna take a look. So this is the flyer I've got for Gold Butte May second through the sixth. Um, and we'll be based on Whitney Pocket. We're going to look for all sorts of stuff. And uh, Michelle Lopez's contact information is there. She is our volunteer coordinator. If you have questions, you can contact her or contact me. Uh, my information is at the end of this slideshow. We're going to be camping at Whitney Pocket. If uh, you don't know where that is, it's where the road, the one road into Gold Butte takes you. So <laughs> it's the road that that is, I guess, sort of paved that you guys will be patching and, ma and make it super nice for us to have in this bio blitz. And uh, you drive into Windy Pockets, a great place to camp. There will be uh, pit toilets there, but there will be no water. So camping, sorry, I got ahead of my slideshow. Camping, the porta are there. And Thursday through that Sunday is really the time. But uh, the entire time, you don't need to be there. If you want to come out for one day, then come out for one day. If you want, you're a volunteer. So you you are beholden to volunteer hours. Um. So other things to bring is everything you need to be comfortable to camp for a few days if you're planning on camping. Uh, binoculars, if you want to do bird surveys and Chuck Wallace surveys and field guides and a cell phone and a way to keep it charged. We'll set up uh, generators 
and have charging stations available, but it's going to be something that we're going to have to keep charged so that people can record using iNaturalist. So there's so much to see and do. There's going to be a whole bunch of activities. You can jump in wherever you want. If you want to see reptiles, you can jump in on the road cruising and then the visual encounter surveys that we have. Uh, that'll still see lizards and hopefully see snakes. Um, if you want to see birds, if you're a birder, you can jump in on the bird uh, area searches we have. We're going to go out and we're going to try and document all the birds in the in that area that are using that area. Uh, one of them, I have heard rumor there's a hepatic tanger if rare birds is your fancy. Uh, that's a rare one for me. Um, <clears throat> this one's a summer tanger. So I've seen the summer tangers um, out in the Virgin River, but not the uh, hepatic. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but keep in mind, something's going to be off hours. Uh, we work around the schedule of the critters. We have to, we have to go to them uh, when they're going to be the highest detection probabilities. Whoops, wrong way. So the we're going to have to go out late at night to do the road cruising. You're going to have to get up sort of early to go out and see the birds. Um, the lizards are kind of in the middle of the day, but in the middle of the, the day in the Mojave Desert around this time, things kind of die down. Um, but that's what we're doing. We're also trapping bats, but we do require a rabies vaccination um, and proof of vaccination, <laughs> rabies vaccination to handle bats because we don't need anyone getting rabies because that's a big deal. And uh, but you could still help out potentially recording data or just being present. Um, taking pictures of bats, I'd rather you take uh, keep that to a, a more of a minimum because the flash photography kind of uh, scrambles them a little bit. But that's something that you can also be involved in. And this is just what I have planned now. Stuff was going to get more stuff will get occupied. I want to have botanists out there doing botany work because I think there's some potential for some odd plants to show up there as well. I mean, I saw that, uh, what's it, that Utah yucca or a different yucca that I hadn't seen uh, before in Nevada, the Gold Butte, and I was out there scouting uh, a couple weeks ago. So there's, there's plenty of stuff to do and see on this BioBlitz. And it's almost like a choose your own adventure book. You can choose what you want to be a part of, and you can not be a part of what you don't really like. So uh, so how do I sign up? Sign me up, right? So register for the BioBlitz and iNaturalist. And uh, that, so if you haven't used iNaturalist, that's how we're recording uh, all the occurrences we're going to see. iNaturalist is a great way to do it because that makes it available to everyone from academia, everyone, even uh, people that are just, you know, uh, dabblers or people that don't even didn't have any background in biology or and have no interest to they could go on iNaturalist and maybe get interested but that's how we're going to record data so this uh, link right here will get you to register as a volunteer for uh, Nevada Department of Wildlife or Endow uh, and that's how we actually uh, keep the lights on to some degree we are required to do a match on our uh, with our federal partners and by volunteering with us, we're able to leverage um, the money that I guess we would pay you if you weren't a volunteer, uh, and then use that as a match for our federal grants. So all you have to do is you register for the BioBlitz, and then register as a volunteer. You show up at Whitney Pocket on 522 to, uh, or 5 to, uh, 2024 And if you don't haven't even done this, if you haven't registered anything, we'll register you on that day, and you can be take part. So really, all you got to do is the last one, and we will we will take it from there. So let's get involved, huh? We're always looking for volunteers. So you can you can do other stuff. Um, I, you guys got your own volunteer stuff, it sounds like, and that's great. Uh, maybe we can cross-pollinate a little bit if you guys do need volunteers. And this is uh, two links that are interesting and, and are pretty good for um, how you can get uh, aware of volunteer opportunities with Endow as they pop in. Here's a QR code that uh, hopefully works that scans you and sends you to the BioBlitz. And I... Uh, Thank you very much for everyone for providing all the, the data and photos that you're hopefully going to provide when you join this BioBlitz. All right. Is there any questions on that? As I stop share, we'll go back to this view. I could put these links into the chat or because uh, this is also being recorded. Yeah. Um, but any, let's pop your questions on the BioBlitz in general. I have uh, just one question. So about how many volunteers do you actually uh, need out there. I know probably as many as you get, but you know, <laughs> to make this successful, you know, what are the sort of numbers are you looking for? Well, I've got um, four reptile routes planned right now. So I uh, eight people for those. Uh, as a skeleton crew, I've got area searches for birds in four places. That would take 10 people per search, throwing that out there. Um, so, I mean, we can definitely absorb a ton of people. 
if we don't get the numbers that we are hoping, I'm hoping for upwards of 50. Um, okay. I think I already have 38 signed up on our Endow website. Wow. I'm not guaranteeing that they'll be there, but they signed up. So, I mean, Somebody the more barrier uh, is really, we can, we'll, we'll absorb as almost as many people as we possibly can. Yeah. Can so do. there are a couple of um, other um, outdoor, you know, sort of oriented groups um, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the area. So I may approach some of them also. Um, you know, we, we could get, you know, 10 to 20, you know, through Friends of Gold Butte. Uh, one minor problem is, of course, uh, you know, a number of our people are heading out in May, you know, because we're a lot of retirees that, that jettison out, you know, towards middle of April. Yeah, understandable. But so then I'll, um, I'll have, also I'll start advertising this to some of the other local um, you know, groups in the area that may, may be interested. Fantastic. In. I've been advertising it too. Um, yeah, spread the word. Um, the more people we get, uh, one of the added benefits I didn't touch on with the bio blitz is it gets all these professionals, volunteers, people, just people who are like-minded in one area. And that's a really good way to cross pollinate ideas, uh, cross pollinate labor. It just, it, it just works. It gets everyone talking. It gets everyone cooperating. Yeah. Cool. Um, now, yeah. And I've never actually done a bio blitz before, so it'd be interesting experience to you go do one <laughs> you, you just show up yeah <laughs> you just show up and you record what you see if you're into plants and you like doing you like botanizing then you can botanize all day and make a whole bunch of recordings and win the whatever it is prize at the end of it where you, you get the most observations because it's always a a badge of honor on bio blitzes i guess <laughs> so anybody else have questions i don't want to dominate and stuff Hey Matt, this is, Matt. This is Mike. Are Are you interested in in um, anything that we've seen prior to this being out? Like like Mitch was mentioning earlier. Like I saw, you know, some kind of snake. I got a picture of it. Some type of rattlesnake. Uh, re uh, about a year or so ago. And are you interested in knowing about those things, or or is this just? This Do you have a thing? location? And a it picture? was in uh, it, Lime's. It was in Lime Kiln Canyon, actually. You know okay. Saying. Yeah. No, that's that's something we, we those occurrences that we potentially could resurrect might be of value. Okay. Um, just send me the picture and the the location. location. Great. Okay. Thanks. Uh, other reps from other agencies. Yes, BLM will be there. Um, Great Basin National Park might be there. <laughs> um, I don't know who oh, Valley of Fire State Park. I haven't reached out to them, but they would be. That's a good idea um lake mead <laughs> unfortunately their biologist is moving on but maybe someone from lake mead will be there <laughs> um but yes i have reached out to other agencies and i will continue to reach out to other agencies as best i can um <clears throat> because i want i want a lot of folks to to show up and i want us to be well represented within agencies um we're co-hosting this with the blm and with the uh national monument uh, staff so I, I am not just, and that was not standing alone on this. We have partners and we are definitely strength in numbers. Okay. So uh, if you've used iNaturalist, you're going to be old hat at this. iNaturalist is a way to record data and it is, um, okay. All kinds of graphics. So how to use iNaturalist. Um, there's the website right there, www.inaturalist.org. Um, and basically you log on and use it with your smartphone. If you do not have a, if you're not a smartphone user or not an iNaturalist user, we could partner you with people who are. So it's not knowing how to use iNaturalist and not wanting to know how to use iNaturalist is not an obstacle to you to taking part in the BioBlitz. We could still get you involved. But um, I would encourage you to use iNaturalist. It's just a cool little program. So how it works. Basically, you record your observations, you share them, and you discuss your findings. It's a occurrence recording tool. It crowdsources identification and it connects everybody. And that's sort of its goal. But what I think it's more powerful doing is being able to share occurrence data across borders. For example, we could share this with Arizona Fishing Game, who hopefully will be attending the BioBlitz as well. <clears throat> and um, they can have access to the same data we do. So who are you and I naturalist? You're a, you're a observer. And you are a document of the biodiversity using photos or sounds. I've never recorded sounds on it. And 
you want to identify or you can peer review stuff. So if you see something and someone says, hey, I think this is uh, uh, the Snoring Mountain Kings Nick we've been looking for. And you're like, you can see that photo that they'll take and be like, yes, I concur. So it's made up of citizen scientists. Citizen science is like all you all and biologists uh, and experts and everyone in between. So <clears throat> you guys are what makes up the core of this iNaturalist and makes, it makes it a powerful program. So the more sightings entered, the more sightings verified, the more our understanding of the biodiversity in Gold Butte is going to be. So why is this information important? Uh, because it makes uh, what you'll need. You need to make a iNaturalist account and you will choose the organisms, I guess. And it really doesn't matter. You can record any organism. I've used this program before. You don't have to be stuck to butterflies or anything. And you record where you saw it and it uses your cell phone to get the... Um, uh, the UTMs or the, the location data from you. And it records the date. And it, it records the evidence, photo or sound. Uh, photos are usually what I use. Uh, sounds are a little more tricky. So we will be making an observation. This is how you make an observation after you've logged into iNaturalist. You download iNaturalist. You join our project, the Goldview project. And you use your phone, uh, your smartphone to take photos. You add any details you want, like I saw this butterfly uh, on this flower, and you save all that stuff, and that's it. Done. You upload it, and you get confirmations. I've got some guy that was in Germany that confirmed some of my small mammals. I don't know how he did that, but um, you, it's open to a whole world of people. And iNaturalist, so you install it on your device. I had a, a kind of a pain, a difficult time installing the app on my Samsung phone, but I can. you can use the web app, the web uh, site as well. So search iNaturalist. It's on the Google Play Store, App Store. It's free. And you click the install, you open it, and there you're doing it. So you will have to create an account to log in. So you use your uh, email, username, and uh, you create a password, and then you log in. If you already have an account, you can just log in. So this is uh, 76 observations that Jess has made. <laughs> so um, you this is how it is. It, it shows you fun stuff that you've seen. It, it shows cool stuff that, you know, you've seen all year long. And it's kind of a cool little timeline of what you've seen. So join the Gold Butte Bio Blitz for our group. That's the next step. So you go to projects up here. And you can just, there it is, projects. And you should be able to, if you search Gold Butte Bio Blitz, you should be able to find it. Um, these are one old ones. And it was just, this was done for a different uh, PowerPoint but that's what we have. So join the Gold Butte Bio Blitz. It'll uh, take you to there. I mean, several people have signed up already. And you can always leave it if you want. And there, Or you can scan the QR code. I'll leave that up for a little while. And this is a good time to take some questions. Do we have any questions in the chat? And is there any questions about iNaturalist or anything of that or back about the Bio Blitz? I used the QR code and it took me right there. Awesome. So. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, I can scan my own QR codes. But I, I could put it up. If not, I could put it in the chat. For those of us who head out in the monument a bunch, if we join the project and we start uh, recording observations, even now when we're mm -hmm. out there, is you know is, is, uh, that fed into you guys okay? It'll get fed into iNaturalist, and we have access to all of iNaturalist occurrence data. So all we have to do as a federal or state agency is make a request and iNaturalist will send it to us. We had a data dump from them for our wildlife action plan back in 2020. I don't think we've had a more recent dump uh, in the last couple of years, but we did get that data and it's been made available to us. We can see it. We know the occurrence database. We know who, who recorded it. You know, uh, sometimes the, the odd languages that they use sometimes because, you know, Common names are not the same across borders always, and um, but scientific names are, and that's the the whole point of those things. So, um, if you want to record right now on Gold Butte, or even not in Gold Butte, in your backyard or wherever you want to record, go ahead, get familiar with the iNaturalist program and make observations. It'll be cool. I'll I'll go on there and take a look and see uh see if I can confirm what you're seeing. Yeah. The in the in the section on the apps, there's a, there's a thing called projects toward the right bottom, and then it says uh, uh, it says join. It says search. Then there's join featured in nearby. Let me, let me search here, but it's not in any of the ones that appear. Hey Matt, Tim Boone again. It shows up on my phone. Oh, excellent. Okay. Oh, there it is. I, I signed it. up on the computer and it showed up on the phone. 
Okay. Yeah, you got to search. I had to search for it. I found it too. You got to search for it once you get on your phone. Okay, good. You know, good, good. Um, I would recommend if you don't uh, have any familiarity with iNaturalist, between the next two months would be a great time to fiddle around with it. Um, maybe go out birding and uh, yes, there's a join button. <laughs> um and just you know take some pictures uh just get familiar with iNaturalist it's it's a pretty easy program to use uh observations no you can have observations whenever you want frank uh go right ahead we all the observations you want you can absolutely do i think you've been using our um our iSpot for that for your herp observations and that's totally uh, reasonable as well iSpot is like endow's iNaturalist if you want to add observations specific to the, <clears throat> the the project, yeah, it's going to be specific to those dates. Um, so I don't think you can add, I don't think you can add observations before those dates start within the bio, the, the Goldby BioBlitz project. Um, so you have to wait for the 2nd of May to, uh, for those things, those, those observations to be entered into the BioBlitz as an event, I believe. I'm not a hundred percent though, that if you start. So if you, don't if you aren't uh taking them within that project they shouldn't be registering within the project i don't think but i can definitely fool with iNaturalist and see if that's the case and yeah i spot for reptile <laughs> yep exactly I, I get i've gotten your data frank thank you <laughs> yeah i don't think it lets you do anything it shows you the project but it doesn't show you allow you to do anything yeah, that's what, I, that's what I thought. I thought the observations had to take place during that time frame. <clears throat> Versus if you're outside the project, it will let you do it. Yeah, I, I don't know if the boundary, because I put the boundary as the administrative boundary for Gold Butte National Monument, and we are going to be working slightly outside of it, especially along um, the Gold Butte Road. Uh, we do road cruising on that road. Um, so I don't think that will discount it from being involved in the bio blitz as long as it's part of the bio blitz but i might have to sort of tweak that and make it a, have a bigger a slightly bigger boundary uh, joy sorry uh i spot is a end out program that uh the state uses to record data it's not something that everybody uses it's sort of open to a herping community that was using it for road cruising data and that's what we were opening up to volunteers to you to when they were road cruising for us um, that they would could record directly into our system and it just inputs stuff directly into uh, ArcGIS online. And then uh, we have access to it immediately versus having to contact iNat iNaturalist and get the data from them. It just is a shortcut. Oh, that, that is one thing I forgot to mention. Um, you do not need to have a four wheel drive vehicle to reach Whitney pocket, but to get to some of the sites, that you will, they're going to require a decent rig, which we can overcome that by carpooling and um, we'll make that happen. So that even if you have a, just a station wagon, you can bring it out to Whitney Pocket. Uh, you can get to where you need to go. Motion sensor cameras. I mean, we could set up motion sensor cameras. Uh, I just picked one up out that was out there. Um, I think we absolutely can at certain things. Um, I have some and we can definitely do that. I don't have any plans to do that, but it's definitely something I could think about and you could think about and uh, we could have them available to set up and just grab them later on that year. Um, one of the, I know we, the one that we set up was on a sensitive location. Uh, so I don't know if that will be something we set up on, but uh, we could set up stuff at Springs. We could set up stuff at less sensitive locations. We will be using a bat at Sonic acoustic recorders for when we do bats uh, trapping. And uh, we potentially could use bird recorders as well out in the area search areas, just so we have an, an additional method of recording, which would make what we're doing even all that more powerful. Hey, we appreciate you coming on and, and chatting with everybody, Matt. Really appreciate you uh, organizing the uh, bio blitz out of Gold Butte. I think that's going to be a very interesting uh, activity for us out there. Um, and you know, we're actually hoping that maybe we can kind of get something done annually um, with this and kind of get it sort of a regular thing for our volunteers to- That would be cool. Get organized. Stuff, so. I would love to help you make that a reality. <laughs>